Good evening, Hanchi Steve Kaufman here. Welcome to Hanchi's World. This episode is going to give you a treat that you are going to remember for many, many a long time. Many, many a long time. For a long time to come. <laughs> with me here, no, with me here is Great Grandmaster Aaron Banks. And for those of you who are not familiar with Mr. Banks, let me just tell you this before we start. Mr. Banks is singularly responsible for having brought the martial arts to the consciousness of 99% of America. He did this way back in the early 60s at Madison Square Garden with his show that he called the Oriental World of Self-Defense. And on it, he had people from all over the world. We learned quite a deal about all kinds of different disciplines, thanks to Master Aaron Banks. Aaron, thank you very much for coming on the show. To me, this is a very special treat and a very special honor. Uh, we're going to talk straight ahead, and we're just going to let you, this is your shot. This is your show kind of thing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the beginnings of the Oriental world, about your beginnings and how you got this whole thing put together, because this is so significant that without this, without you, you wouldn't have anything what's going on, especially guys walking around with 12th and 15th degree black belts, mm. all right, uh, doing all kinds of things that they think they invented. Mm. We, and you especially, invented this entire world. Tell us about it, please. Well, uh, first of all, I want to say uh, I'm, uh, I don't do television anymore. Uh, I used to. Uh, I used to, I did every talk show that there was. Uh -huh. If you want me to mention some of them, I could. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Johnny Carson, Merv Griffin, That's Mike right. Douglas, David Susskind, Tom Snyder, um, Clay Cole. Show. I, I, I just, on and on, yeah. On and just, it's so many. Uh, mm -hmm. Joe Franklin. Yeah, yeah. So many. And uh, w that's the time I went on in the early uh, 60s. Yes. And the, the reason why, <clears throat> because I saw something in the martial arts when I was, I, I, I started my martial art training in 1958 okay. in New York City. And John Slocum was my first uh, sensei, Shotokan. Yes. Uh, a lot of people don't, might, might not know what Shotokan is as a system like the uh, Goju system, like the Ishinru system. It's a system, a Japanese uh, martial arts system, although it came from Okinawa. But anyway, uh, so I saw something in the martial arts. I had a fight, and I didn't do too good in the fight. I was working in a record store at the time on Broadway. And um, I didn't do too good. And I, I, came, I, I was born in the Bronx, grew up in the Bronx. so. Um, and I had a lot of fights, but I never knew what I was doing. And that fight put me into a martial arts school, karate. Wow. And why I went into that, because uh, I was in the right. And when you're in the right, I mean, uh, you got to know what you're doing. If you're going to talk up and you're going to stay up and somebody asks you to go outside in the street, you know, you know not for, to get some fresh air, but just to, you know, to have a little confrontation, a fight, in other words. You gotta go. I mean, you can't back down on it. You gotta. So I would go, and, and that fight that I didn't do, the, the police came, was on Broadway. Uh, I'll forget, it's a long story, and I don't wanna make it any longer. Yeah. So what happened was, I saw, in the martial art world, I saw something, as in my training, I saw something that was very uh, advantageous, healthy mentally and physically healthy. So I'm saying to myself, hey, this is good. And I was an actor. You know, on the side I was doing acting, I did motion pictures, uh, did a Broadway play and all that. So I was on my way to become, a, uh, no doubt about it, uh, a good, uh, a big time actor. Uh, everybody said I was in actor's studio as well. I mean, you know, oh, oh yeah, lots was going on with me. But, and I had to make a living, because acting wasn't the, uh, you, you can't make a living in acting in the beginning. It's, forget about that. Anybody who's an actor out there, you know what, and you know what I'm talking about. It's a very difficult thing. Anyway, I thought the martial arts would be good for the public. 
And that's where it started. There was nothing on television. There was no motion pictures. There was no magazine. Well, there was one magazine called Black Belt Magazine that sold for 50 cents, would you believe it? It was about 50 pages or something. But outside of that, there was nothing about martial arts. And here comes me, this guy, and all these ideas that I had. So to make a long story longer, <laughs> I decided at that time to um, open, my, open up my own school. And I did, right on Broadway. Why Broadway? Why Times Square? Because the world knows about New York City and the world knows. I mean, if you don't know about New York City, you're not from this planet. You know I mean, what they say, it's a, this is New York and everything else isn't. You know that. <laughs> so I'm not knocking you know, people from outside of New York, but why are they all coming to New York, these people from outside of New York? Uh, that means, and that goes for Europe, the, everybody's, anyway. So here I am, opened up my school, and then these thoughts came to me, and I, all, I thought maybe a samurai spirit got involved with me. That's really what I thought. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm a kid from the Bronx. What, what's this all about? You uh, know? Yeah, let, let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I don't mean to cut you off. No, I, I just, no, just no, want to, no, you know, no. like get a, a few this other things. This is your but, show. You know, you can do whatever anyway. you want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, go ahead. Okay. What about the early tournaments and the early things like that? I mean, all of a sudden, we didn't, as a matter, we didn't call it martial arts. We called it karate. That's uh, what we go. How did you start getting involved the, with the uh, tournaments? Uh, there was a man like named Gary Alexander. Yeah, Gary. Yeah, he's Gary still around. had a tournament, uh, one tournament a year. That's right. Okay, and he was putting it on at uh, a place called Manhattan Center. Yeah. And I went, uh, I, in fact, I competed uh, in there, but uh, we were taught full contact. Yeah, that's right. So uh, we all got disqualified and all, so I, I just gave that up. The same thing <laughs> in the garden. Forget yeah, right. about that, yeah, because yeah, it's right. for points, the tournament at that time, you know, uh, you know contact. Anyway, but, so I saw the audience, and the, there was no one in the audience. And I saw, you know, you know, I'm looking at the whole picture now. I'm seeing people competing. And I'm saying, wow, this looks terrific, you know. Public should like this here, should. So that's how I got involved with the tournaments too. So that's when I started in with the tournaments. And, uh, and then I, I took off like uh, 747. What gave you the idea for the Oriental world, especially in Madison Square 19, Garden, aside from the fact that you, you know how to promote your own 1966, you know? yeah. uh, I, I said to myself, this should be a show. There's no such thing as a yeah. show. Uh, uh, one thing, incidentally, Gary Alexander is still running his tournaments, and he will be celebrating his 50th anniversary yeah. coming up next year. Good so, man. Just I like Gary. One of the few. Good one man. One of the mensch. Yeah. Okay. But he was like uh, a real pioneer for yeah. that. But uh, then I started in with the tournaments and all that. But I, the show, The Oriental World of self defense and I said, what name should I give it? Because yeah, everything was the Oriental, basically Asian. So uh, I called it the Oriental World, and then and I took it to a town hall, which was on Forty Third Street, I believe, yeah. in in Manhattan, and uh, sold out the place with seventeen hundred seats, sold it out, and then I got involved with a man named Sid Bernstein, who brought the Beatles to yeah. the United States, and um, I got involved with him, and he backed it up, you know, put some money into the into it. and so. The show was good, so I, that's why I kept on with that show. It had Taekwondo, <coughs> excuse me, uh, karate, uh, kung fu. I mean, even with the kung fu, uh, in 1961, I went on to the Johnny Carson program. I had a kung fu man teaching in, a, in my school, in my school. And you're, uh, there was no such thing as a kung fu in an American school. Kung fu was specifically, Underground, uh, they didn't Chinese want to, downtown yeah. in Chinatown. They did not want to so, saw, but William Chung was the man, and I got him onto the. Uh, they thought it was a food. I, I mentioned that, and they said, uh, "I have a man who does kung fu." He said, well, "Oh, he makes food and uh, kung fu food." I said, "No, no, no, it's a martial art." <laughs> So uh, this is all true, uh, and uh, I, uh, <laughs> uh, so I went on with him, and yeah, no, no, this is true, uh, and I went on with him, and uh, we did this show, and he did the Kung Fu, it was the first time ever in the United States that a, a, a Kung Fu man was seen on 
television. So that took place. <clears throat> and then I made a motion picture called The Greenwich Village Story. Uh, John Avelson was the director. Who's John Avelson? He's the man that directed a movie called Rocky and got the Academy Award for it. He was my director for The Greenwich Village Story in 1962. And uh, I used, I said to him, uh, I said, you know, I, I was the gangster in the movie. Anyway, I was a, not a nice guy. And I, I, I said, instead of using hands and all that, why don't I, uh, why don't, no, yeah, I hope you believe what I'm telling you because right. it's not true. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't have, you can't, you can't, can't make, make these this things up. up. Man. You can't make I mean, this, this up, is man. all fantastically true. Right. So I used martial arts, I karate. I said, what, what if I used, and so John said, karate? He said, yeah, I mean some kicks and, you know, taking the man out with some karate technique. He said, sounds great. And I used, that was the first time in an American movie that you would see karate. So I was meant for some kind of promotion of martial arts. And basically, that's how it started. And, that's, and then before I took off, like, uh, forget about it, like uh, 747. And what happened from there? 1967, I did a thing called the East Coast versus West Coast. Oh, yeah, I called yeah, up yeah. a man called uh, Ed Parker from the yeah, West that's, Coast. That's he was the uh, big man. West Coast was the biggest thing. East Coast, nobody even knew about they the East Coast. They didn't even like us. They no, didn't there was a few people yeah, teaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody in Brooklyn, a guy by the name of Rick Lynch's, another guy, Ed Grove. I mean, and then in the uh, very few people for teaching. Nothing to do with the public, show, or anything. So I said, hey, I got to get out there. And that's what it was all about, uh, Steve. That's what it was all about. There was nothing. So I, 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 I just created all that and then had the Taekwondo, Kung Fu, all in the show. And the best people doing it, best masters. And I had breaking, I had weaponry. I had a, 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 in fact, what I did also, I went to, eventually went to Madison Square Garden, and uh, I had to bring the audience in. You know, the 20,000 seats, and I had <laughs> to bring the audience in. I, and what I did was I got a man from Germany, from Munich. His name was Ralph Bayala. Who is Ralph Bayala? So a bagel or something? A bagel. That's funny, Bayala. Bagel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so I, I said, I, I saw... I, I, I said, I, I said, uh, I said, Ralph, you know, and, 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 oh, I don't, I didn't speak German, you know, but Ralph, uh, would you come to the Madison Square Garden? Because I read about him in the Enquirer. Who is he? He's the man that catches bullets with his teeth. What? Bullets with your, yeah. All true. So we checked him out. He was shot nine <laughs> times. This is all true. Uh, Madison Square Garden said, no, he's a phony. I know, it's true. And I, that brought the piece in. I put him on the, fly, on the po flyers and the posters, and that brought the people in. See, they did not know Peter Urban or any of these people, uh, including uh, Moses Powell, uh, Ron Duncan. They didn't know him. So I can't advertise them. So I had to have something astounding, incredible, reality, reality. And that was the Oriental World of Self-Defense, the show. It was the first reality show, and it was a martial arts show. And so what happened out of all that, now yeah, this is interesting because it's history. And this is history in the United States right here. And what happened out of that, so somebody came over and called me on the phone. You you're sold out Madison Square Garden, which I did, 20,000 seats. And you sold out the Felt Forum, which was the lesser one of the two. It had only 4,500 seats. And, I, uh, and then I was doing my tournaments. I created a tournament a month. Every month there was a tournament. No more one a year. So listen, Aaron, this is absolutely fascinating what you're telling us here. And uh, I am quite sure that the audience is yeah, that's totally got to be mesmerized. It's, wow, this that, is real, man. This really what, happened. You yeah, know? It really I mean, the people don't really, really, really no yeah. phony baloney. baloney. That's, That's it. Right. That's okay. right. It, it actually you, took place. What do you think of what's going on today in the martial arts? <laughs> <laughs> I, you, I just opened up a can of oranges. Oh for many God. of you out there, I'll you have you, to. I, no, wait, wait, wait. If, you have to. Yeah. Are, you, are you rolling? Is this thing rolling? Okay. Yeah. You have to understand 
when we're going to talk now, we're going to put it straight on the line. A lot of you know my attitude towards this, but you're going to hear it from someone I consider to be a master as well. I mean, there's a lot of guys running around with titles, super duper this, super duper that, 12th degree, uh, uh, <laughs> 15th degree, whatever they want, okay? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I put something very interesting on Facebook, and you can go look it up. It's called my public announcement and my entire position with ranking. By the way, for those of you who are curious about this, I am now, and it's sanctioned, 22 degree, 22nd degree black belt, profound great grandmaster, you may address me as your lordship. And I'm saying that tongue in cheek to put a boner in all of these guys who are running around, 28 years old, hanchis, 32 year old grandmasters, excuse me, we didn't even know that stuff existed until it was forced down our throats by everybody else and we had to establish our own position to say, hey, wait a minute, we were here first. Aaron Banks was here just about before all of us. Aaron, what do you think about what's going on today, including, never mind the rank, including the <laughs> practitioners? Well, Steve, I think... Also, I want you to know... <laughs> <laughs> I, I want is, you to know... This is the Aaron Banks show, and I, my guest <laughs> is Steve Kaufman. Wrote a book called The Five Rings, which is, in my estimation, was the best book ever, ever written in the martial arts or about the martial arts. And I'm, I'm telling you, go run to your bookstore and try to get it, all right? Buy that, it online, I make the money. Or if it's online, <laughs> uh, you order it. I'm giving yeah. you my, my sanction on it. I'm telling you right now, it's, a, it's the best. There's no, no book better than the <laughs> Steve you. Kaufman's Thank uh, you. Book of Five, Five Rings. Rings. There you go, man. There isn't any. I'm serious. And people who, who are watching this, who have written books, no problem. You've done good. You wrote, you wrote a nice book. But again, I'm, from my, my standpoint and my vision, and uh, I'm saying it's the best book ever written in the martial arts, and that's The Five Rings by Steve Kaufman. I want to point something out here before we start getting into like banging these guys a little bit. And that's essentially what you're going to do, man. Okay, there's no problem there. Aaron Banks was on the cover of Black Belt magazine. Oh, in, that was 1971. 1971. Yeah, but... The, before 90% of you were born. How but about that, Sports Illustrated? I got, Sports Illustrated. How about the cover of Sports Illustrated? There you go. What do you think about what's going on? I mean, you were at the, you were at the uh, Grandmaster Soto's Masters event, and you, well, you really let me, brought the house down with that. Okay, uh, but, uh, uh, let me, but, just, let okay. me just say this. Uh, go for it. Go for Steve, it. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shame, and I have to say it very seriously, because the public doesn't know who is for real and who is not for real. And there's no laws and there's no overseer, including the New York State Athletic Commission, to do anything about this. There are people who have opened up schools <clears throat> who made themselves black belt and uh, printed up uh, 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 diplomas and put it on their walls or whatever they've done made themselves 10, 12, 15, whatever degrees that they think proper for themselves. It's a sham because there are people such as Steve Kaufman, to my left here, who have put a lifetime in, in not only in the, in the teaching process, but also in the spiritual process and explaining and uh, lecturing and all that, seminars. And so many people. And here come these phonies, these ugly pieces of garbage. <laughs> and I'm calling you straight out, you're a piece of garbage. <laughs> because you are a bunch of son of a bitches out there who have no right. You should be put in jail. That's number one. You should be locked up and taken away. You are as ugly as some kind of a, a mugger in the street, as some kind of a robber. Stores, you don't deserve to be on the, with decent people. And you're claiming things. These people should be locked up. 
they should be um, uh, incarcerated for a, length, a long time because what they're doing is praying. It's a scam. It's a con. These are not legitimate people. At one time, I was with the Better Business Bureau, and I many years ago, and the, and I would say if if, the, if you get any calls from people, let them call me, and I'll let you know if the man is a phony or if he's for real or what. And they did that. I was with the better, as I said, Better Business Bureau, but that's to me a very touchy situation, and uh, it's it's wrong. It's preying on innocent people. <laughs> It's taking advantage of people. You're calling yourself all sorts of names, and you don't. Have, and, the, and the real name that you should be called is a phony. That's the real name. Now you don't like, and I, I know you're watching, some of you. <clears throat> so I'm letting you know. Stop what you're doing. Stop it. You're scamming people, and you're taking advantage. Of, and someday, somewhere, someplace. Somehow, and someone is going to do a job on you. It's going to mess you up. And I've seen some of you in action. I've seen some of you on the, uh, on the TV, uh, on the uh, websites and all that. And you're a disgrace. Total disgrace. Right. And the MMA stuff. Let me tell you something. Mark. I call it mock martial arts, MMA. I call it DF, degenerate fighting. I feel bad for the fighters. I really feel bad for these guys because they're going to end up like these boxers who ended up uh, uh, punch drunk, didn't even know their first name. They couldn't even slug their words, or had their mouths. So that's what you guys are going to end up. I know you're in it for some money. I know you're in it for some glory. But man, this is not the way to go. All right. Well, well, you know, one of the things, one of the things I, you know, I am not particularly in favor of because I do believe it sends the wrong message to kids. But the amount of training that these guys got to go through to get to that level of stamina where they can handle these kinds of things, I, I think that... It's it not martial that. arts. If no, it, it's not. Yeah, okay. Take those two words. I agree with you. Okay. They work very hard to get some kind of a proficiency. It's brawling is what it is. It's brawling. But it's not martial arts. It's not true martial arts. True martial arts has systems. If it's karate, judo, jiu-jitsu, uh, kendo, whatever the system is, iaido, whatever the system is, they have forms, they have katas. They have nothing. Where do you think uh, that the future of martial arts... I hate the word martial arts. Arts to me is entertainment. Means well, entertain, you know, you've got to have some kind of significance. You've got to have, you gotta have some kind of idea. Martial means fighting. So, and it is an art form. So it, it's all right to say martial arts. Okay. But the problem you have, uh, Steve Kaufman, the major problem you have is these phonies using these martial arts to get, a, to, uh, to, uh, to get by. That's the problem. Calling themselves professor, doctor, supreme, uh, urine, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 all sorts of uh, names. And that's basically what they're doing too. You know why they're doing that? To, to, to sh uh, have some kind of credibility because the public knows these different titles. I mean, I told uh, the New York State Athletic Commission, make me a deputy. I'll clean it up. I will clean the mess up. The MMA people are banned from New York. No problem. These people that are teaching it should not be teaching it in New York since it's banned. And they said, we can't do that. Good. You can't do that. Then Banks is not around anymore. Banks will continue to do his Hall of Fame. He will continue to do his Oriental World of Self-Defense and his tournaments. I've got one coming up October the 21st. Yes, tell it's us gonna about it. It's going to be the World's Martial Arts Championships. It's going to be held here, right here in Manhattan on 57th Street, a beautiful chandelier ballroom. I mean, it is fantastic. Let me tell you something, Steve. Let me tell you something. You're doing, I don't care how many people watch this, you're doing something for the public. Yes. 
That's yes. what you're doing. Yes. You're giving them and you're putting on uh, decent, legitimate people and all that. And you're talking straight talk, no BS uh, type of talk. Here. And you, you don't have to cut that out. I was on the uh, cover of uh, a magazine called Sports Illustrated. I'm sure you people out there know about that, heard about Sports Illustrated. This man, Hank Aaron, hit the home run that week. He broke Babe Ruth's record. I think it was 715. It was originally 714. When he did that, knocked me off the cover. They took me right off the cover because I was the first ever martial arts person to be in Sports Illustrated. Aaron, yes. thank you for coming on the show. And I, I want to tell you straight up, okay? Uh, I have a certain reputation. I'm not talking about the show. I'm in the martial arts. Oh, a lot yeah. of people know me. Yeah. A lot of people say, who, what, where, why, what? I know, okay, pretty much I've been around just about as long as you have with this. Back, back in the late 50s, the early 60s, we were fighting in the garden, all kinds of stuff like that. As a matter of fact, somebody's not going to mention his name, but he's got a, an 8 millimeter of me fighting in the garden kind oh. of thing. Oh, but, right. So, I mean, like... So this is like going way back. You know what the deal is, okay? And I appreciate the fact that you got a little, shall we say, vociferous. We may have, you know, and, and, and give him a good gazook, okay? We're going to have to cut a little of that, you know? But, but that's okay. I'm only going to cut the uh, nice words. I'm going to leave the bad words in, okay? No, but listen, thank you so much, okay? Yeah. And I, I would like to have you back on again. And we'll just uh, go into it a little further. I'm going to push and promote the October 29th event. 21st. Okay? That's what I said. I'm going to push and promote the new. I'm going to push and promote the October 21st event. It's going to be here in New York. It's going to be a world championship of legit guys. And from what I understand, the people who are going to be accepting them into the ring will have the opportunity to check their credentials. So uh, it's not going to, and it's going to be done with class and style the way you've done everything. Okay? God bless, man. Okay? You take care. Okay. Boom.